it's time for talk. Each evening at this time, Monday through Friday, Rosemary interviews local personalities and others who bring items of interest to this community. Time for Talk is a community betterment service designed to cooperate with our local community betterment program. Tonight, Rosemary takes us by means of portable camera out of our studios and maybe into your neighborhood. And now, it's time for talk. That's too good to taste truck. Oh, you tell them the you're the doctor, doctor. they're going to find a place for you. A place for you. Dr. Butcher, I'm standing with a guy with a dental problem out here. Dr. Butcher, we well, we'll sure let you get Butcher. out. Butcher? Butcher. I thought you said Butcher. Butcher's a camel. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Doc, see the trailer right there? You might go in there and talk to somebody. There's some Red Cross folks okay. in there, and they can probably yeah. tell you where you need to go. Do I need to uh, park back here on the road? Well, I tell you what. I'm not sure how congested it is up in here. It's so. pretty congested. Okay. If you would park there, that'd may, be great. It may be simpler for us to do that. Let me try Park right. right there if you want. Okay. Keep your windows rolled up. Yes. Yeah. All right. We pull into camp and of course there is congestion galore here. Not really a place for all of these cars, but uh, Britt is coming out to see about uh, a call for someone with a jaw that was injured at some point and we don't know um, the extent of that, so uh, we're gonna go up and investigate. Britt uh, unloads the supplies he's brought, not knowing exactly uh, what he'll find or what he needs to do. So uh, he had to go to the office and pick up the good thing. This was a holiday. When they called him, he's uh, staining his deck. So uh, I guess this takes precedent over doing any work at home. Everyone has to direct traffic here. You've never seen such a jammed place in your life. And over to my left, uh, there are items of clothing, there are toys, there are people bringing in and delivering things all the time. Uh, everyone is sending supplies. Uh. Well, inside the main uh, assembly hall, I would guess this is, uh, trying to find out, trying to to determine which gentleman it is that needs help. And as you see, everyone is here, everyone is being registered. Uh, it's actually, it's really just pretty much pandemonium at this moment. The sign on the post said Station 3. And a doctor manning this station. here with thing, everything under control. Well, I think things are going well. I mean, there's just uh, uh, there's just been a lot happening since uh, last night about 8.30 out here with the, the group here. Uh, they've come How in. How many people? Uh, there was 144 registered, but I don't think everybody got registered last night according now, to information that I see. Where have most of these come from? Uh, basically from, uh, from the convention center. There's been a number of them that come from the convention center. In New Orleans? In New Orleans. And there are some, there are some horrific uh, stories that have been taking place with, uh, with some of these people. So uh, 
Okay, uh, we'd like to talk. We'd like to talk to some of those people. Uh, right now, Britt's trying to find a man that he's supposed to look at his jaw. Yes, sir. There, uh, there's been, uh, there's uh, uh, the medical facilities, a number of people have uh, been treated. There were a number of them taken to the hospital last night to get treatment out there. Then they're visiting with the doctors here again today. They've got two, uh, two doctors here. So uh, there's just, uh, there's just a lot of needs and we just need to, we need to be thankful that we're not in the same situation. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Good. Thank you. Yeah. school district is going to take them in we'll have a general idea of how many to expect okay is there a problem with the number uh, and this one district taking them you think there'd be two I honestly think? I've heard several different stories um, this is technically Hawkins school district but we're not sure that they'll be able to handle this number so we've heard all kinds of things they may go to Hawkins they may come to Kennett seen it they may even put teachers on the campsite we just don't know at this point, but we wanted to kind of have a general idea of what to expect tomorrow. Okay. Good. Right, thank you. Well, the semis are backing in here. We don't know what he's got, but we thought we'd go around the back to see. Uh, the sign on the door says La Belle, Florida. And you see uh, at the base of two or three trees around here that there are watermelons. So some of the farmers have brought in Watermelons, there ought to be plenty of, of watermelon to eat for everybody for a day or two anyway. As you can see, watermelons. Lots more watermelons, and of course with this many people here, they'll be able to use them. Now, we, um, I think someone pointed out an emergency management director, and I think it's the man in the red shirt. We might to go up and, and talk to him, and um, I don't really know how much you can find out on a day when everybody's here and, and they're walking all over each other. But let's go look. Man. 
Okay, okay, so, so you'll call, you got that then, yeah, 342? Yeah, I her call on my Okay, phone. okay, good deal. Shane Stolting? Stolting, that's correct. Stolting, and where yes. are you from? I'm from here in Kennet. Oh, okay, all right. And this was, a, how long have you known that this camp was going to be put in use like this? Well, I got a call um, Friday from the Region E SEMA coordinator, Mark Winkler, that the camp had been offered by the Baptist Association and that they may be using it, um, that we need to start coordinating getting things together. So uh, I, I met Kevin Carter, who's the director of missions for the Black River Baptist Association. We met him and Fire Chief John Malata out here Friday about 2 o'clock and just started organizing and getting stuff together. And it just kind of went from there. Okay. And how many did you get in? Well, we, we, we had been... They haven't held still long enough to really exactly, count them. Exactly, exactly. Oh, okay. I can't get some exact numbers yet from the Red Cross. So around 100? More than 100. Probably, I'd say close to 200. Oh, really? Yeah, I, I, I know for a fact there's at least 144 or more. Okay, all right. So, so and, and you're, if, if we understand it correctly, you're calling on some of the churches to provide the the labor for the cooking and for the meals in days to come. Yes, yeah, we are. However, um, th things have changed. The Red Cross is now basically, and since this is an official Red, this is an official Red Cross shelter, they're kind of in charge of everything now, um, and things, to put it politely, have, have changed just a little okay, bit. Okay, so, uh, so... Uh, uh, but uh, it's the best of my knowledge, that is kind of the plan. Uh, and we're also calling on some of the churches to volunteer to have services out here. That they normally might have Wednesday night services at their church, dismissing them and having the services out idea. here. It's which we'll, we'll be contacting them at a later time to okay. work out schedules good, to do that. Good, good. So the Red Cross, the official Red Cross is, is in charge of this yes. camp, whole yes. camp situation. All right, we'll come back out at a later time, perhaps, okay. and catch uh, some of what's going on. Okay. All okay. Right. Thank you. Uh -huh. Several people to see today, all ages, and nobody really knows what's going on just at this moment. There are just people milling around everywhere. There, there are different stations that they are to go to. I heard them just announce uh, Walmart vouchers uh, are to be picked up here. I don't know what this means, but hopefully we're going to be able to find out for you. Well, you missed all the talking. Did you get it? Well, we're in the middle of a uh, of what looks like an area-wide rummage sale, and as one gentleman who was just walking by said, we got too many clothes. Yes, they do have. They better hope for good weather because it's going to take a while to move all of these clothes somewhere. Uh, people are going through them, roughly 200 people, you've heard someone say, that are here. And this first day, everything is really ragged. They are trying to register people. They're trying to give uh, um, shots, tetanus, I would guess. Uh, the gentleman who was the doctor didn't want to talk to us about anything. Um, but anyway, you see what's here. And uh, I'm sure in a few days, there'll be a lot more order to things. But right now, everybody's bringing it in, and they don't know what to do with it or where to put it. So you see the situation. Camp McClanahan opened its doors to some 200 refugees, and they feel like they're in heaven, they said. Auntie Carolyn. 